All right, uh, how are you doing? This video is going to hopefully show you guys uh, the whole idea of what uh, we're just going to do a simple concept of what these words mean when we're talking about electronics. So you might have heard me say high or low or this is making a pulse. You might have heard any of these three words mentioned and not really know what I'm going on about in the past. Uh, so we're going to clarify that by showing you some examples in Circuit Wizard and then hopefully talk about what these two things are. You can use resistors in a particular configuration called pull up or pull down. And that might not sound like it means a great deal, but hopefully once you've seen it, it might click with you. And then I'm just going to show you a couple of circuits where we've got pull up and pull down resistors doing this job of making things go high and low. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a clue what I'm going on about. Right, first off then, Let's have a look at um, some circuits that I've made. So what I've got here, this is really, really basic stuff. Uh, this is how I tend to ask you guys to draw any circuit. Start by putting in what I call the power rails. So you put in your big positive power rail along the top and you put in zero volts along the bottom. I think you're all kind of happy with that. Now, this in the middle is just a chip. Uh, in this case, it's a decade counter. It could be any chip. Uh, it might even be a transistor, could be any kind of electronic component really. But what's important here is how it's connected. This pin here called enable, um, because it's connected up to the positive, we call this being held high. Fairly straightforward stuff. So if it's connected to positive, you call it high. If we go to this next diagram along the bottom, um, no prizes for figuring this one out. If I take the same connection and connect it to the zero volts rail, um, some people call that negative, then this is called being held low. So connected like that, held high, connected like that, held low. Easy so far. Right, um, the next thing I'm going to show you then is how you would build a simple circuit using a resistor to switch something from high to low. Because sometimes we want to do that. Now, just to give you an idea, if I uh, pull up another circuit temporarily, just bear with me a second while I find it. Um, I might have to look on my desktop. Okay, here we go. Alright, so let's check this one out here. Right, here we go. So this is that same chip I just showed you, but actually built into a kind of circuit. So I've got my positive rail here, I've got my negative rail, I've got a bunch of LEDs like that. If I press play and just show you what it does, every time I push this button, the chip turns on the next LED in the sequence. This is a decade counter, some of them we'll look at a bit more later on. Now, we need a particular arrangement like this because we want, um, basically this chip will only count through these LEDs every time it gets a signal that goes high and then low in that order, okay, or low to high and back again. So. We've got to make that arrangement with this push to make and this resistor. And I'm going to kind of show you how that's going on in the uh, in the other circuit we were looking at just a minute ago. Next circuit wizard. Bear with me while my computer has a heart attack. There we go. You can go there. Okay, so we've got holding high, holding low, and then what I've drawn here is just, again, not a whole circuit, but just what I call a circuit that will switch from low to high. Now, I just want to kind of show you what's going on here. If I press, uh, click on current flow at the moment, and press play, um, in, um, in this program, anywhere you see red, uh, means a high voltage. If we go by the little diagram down here, anywhere we see green means no voltage. So if you look what happens when I hold this button down, you see the whole chunk here goes red, which means I am connecting it to my high voltage, 9 volts in this case. When I let go, I can clearly see I'm green, so I must be on 0 volts or a low voltage. So why is it then that when I press this button, my signal goes high, and when I let go of it, it goes low? Well, it's all to do with this particular resistor here, okay? Um, you've got to think about it in terms of resistance. So we would call this a pull-down resistor. When I'm not pressing the button, 
this resistor is pulling um, my enable pin low. It's keeping it held low to zero volts. And the reason it's doing that is purely to do with resistance. If you imagine this switch here, um, when it's open, it has almost infinite resistance. It's got, it's basically just a giant air gap. Nothing can get across the gap because it's air. So its resistance here is huge. And compared to this resistor, it's a lot bigger. So the path of least resistance is down. Now, when I push my switch and hold it, I've now made a connection across the switch and it has next to no resistance now because the switch is a conductor. So my pin in this case, bearing in mind electricity always tends to take the path of least resistance, it's got a choice. It could be held low, but there's a lot of resistance in the way, or it could go up high now I've made a path through the switch, so instead it chooses to be held high. Um, and it's to do with resistance, okay? So if you see the switch on the top in a nutshell, and the resistor on the bottom, it's a pull down resistor and it allows you to switch from low, as it is at the moment, to high when I click it and back again. Okay, now just to show you that in a maybe a clearer form, if I bring up a graph here, um, this is a graph of voltage against time and I'm just going to put a probe on there and measure what the volts are doing. If I press play, um, you'll now see next to nothing happening. Hold on. Okay, there we go. If you look at the graph, when I'm holding the switch down, my voltage is at 9 volts. You can see it here. When I let go of the switch, it drops to 0 volts. You can just about make it out. And obviously, I can hold it for a long period of time and let go, or I can do a short period of time. Now, in terms of that other circuit I was showing you a minute ago, um, the decade counter with the lights, each time I click this button, I'm making a high, low, high, low pulse. And each time one of those arrangements arrived at the decade counter, it would count to the next LED in the sequence, okay? Right, um, obviously this circuit switches low to high. If I look at this picture now, all I've done is flip these around. I've put the push to make on the bottom, the resistor on the top. This circuit does the opposite. So normally, if you look, I press play, my pin is connected high because the path of least resistance at the moment is up. Remember, the switch has got infinite resistance when you're not pressing it. So, and if we look, our voltage is a nice steady 9 volts. If I press the button now, it drops low, and it will stay low as long as I hold it. I let go, press it, let go, press it. So it's basically the same thing, but working the other way around. Okay. Um, if you now saw a resistor on the top, this resistor is pulling the voltage up, so we call that a pull-up resistor. Okay, so that would be a pull-down resistor. That would be a pull-up resistor. Fairly straightforward. Right, if we go back to our um, our other graph, oh, sorry, our other circuit now. I'll just bring that up for you. And this one here. Hopefully it'll make a bit more sense why we need it there. So you'll see that same arrangement as we had before. Here's my positive rail, here's zero volts. And because the resistor's on the bottom, this must be a pull-down resistor. So at the moment, if we look at current flow, we've got nothing. I might stick the graph up there to show you as well. Stick a probe on there. Okay. And obviously, as I, you can see in time with the, the pressing of these here, I'm going high, low, high, low. And the chip is choosing to count through each LED in order. In this case, it's on that one every time I push the button. Okay, so some of you might be thinking then, well, that's great, uh, but why in the hell do you actually need that resistor there? Okay, why can't we just, if I can stop this, will it let me do that? All right, okay, it won't let me delete it. Thank you, Circuit Wizard, that's so helpful. I do like to talk to myself. Right, um, imagine this same circuit without this being there at all. Imagine you've just got the top half. Um, although in principle that should work, and you may even find it even works on computer simulation, you will find it won't work in real life if you do that. The reason being, go away cat, I'm sorry my cat's just decided he's going to walk in front of my computer. Cheers, get lost. Right, um, anyway, so the resistor doesn't well, you might think it doesn't need to be there at all. Um, it does. In real life, if you don't have that resistor there keeping this leg held low, definitely, 
then what happens is static electricity in the air um, basically affects the pin and the pin thinks it's being pressed when it's not and you'll end up with kind of a false press the chip will think it's been triggered when it hasn't um, it gets even worse if you get fingers near the circuit because the static in your body um, the fact the human body's got static electricity on it all time will also affect it and essentially what happens is if you don't bother to put that resistor in you'll find you get bugs you get problems with the chip all right so it's good practice when building any kind of circuit like this where you need to make a pulse to put either a pull down or a pull up resistor in like so okay uh, that's that concept